It's also helpful if I was to create multiple views or multiple page setups for this document as well. And I wanted to quickly go through how you might do that in a schematic design situation. So I'm going to go ahead and minimize our Illustrator file here. So I've got this file and it's saved as the sheet graphic 11 by 17 template. Very simply, I'm going to take this file, I'm going to do a save as, and just for the sake of doing a tutorial, I'm going to do this and save it as multiple layouts. So there's more layouts in this sheet file than just one. I like to use the PDF as opposed to the EPSs, so I'm going to eliminate the EPS file in this instance. And actually, I just realized I probably didn't save the file before I saved it, so let me go back and file, save as, this one as well. And then I can close this file, then open the multiple layouts one, and come in here and I'll delete that layout. And then simply come in here and I'm going to copy this layout. And again, I want to create a copy. When I create a copy, since there's only one other layout, it's going to move it to the end anyway. But I'll go ahead and click move to the end. And then I'm going to do the same thing, create a copy, move to the end. And then I'm going to go ahead and rename these to be floor plan PDF 2 and floor plan PDF 3. So now here, what I can do is copy this. I'm going to copy this and I'm going to use a multiple of an eighth inch scale or a multiple of 96. And let's see how far these are away from each other. Let's do a measurement here to kind of get a feel for how big this is. And it's 136 inches. 136 inches is multiple of 12. So I want to go ahead and copy this. I'm going to make it a quarter of 10 times 96, which is 24. So 2400, and I'm going to copy it again, 2400. And now I have a regular interval here between these. And this can represent anything. This can represent a different scheme. This can represent a different floor. Say this is a ground floor on this house. It's not going to obviously be a second floor. But if you're designing a tower and you wanted to have 10 towers, on the same sheet just so that you can quickly go in between change layers and such. You can put them all on the same sheet through the schematic phase until you get to a level that you want to develop the drawings a little more and at that point you take off each one of the drawings and put them on an individual file for just the speed that you need in the concept and schematic design phase. A lot of times you keep the drawings in the same file. So these are 2,400 inches apart and I know that there's going to be a multiple of that to get to these next phases. I want to have something in each one of these to distinguish this file from the next drawings. What I'm simply going to do is going to come in to this line drawing. I'm going to take a layer here. I'm going to use the room name layer just because that's the only one that has an anno aspect to it. I'm going to copy this, paste it here. I'm going to make some text using mText, and I'm just going to call this option one, and let me use caps lock, and then match the properties to that so this will be the right color. Let me take a step back here. So this is on the wrong layer. Let me erase this, come back here. We need to get a layer to work, and I need to get the room name layer. I'm going to put this on to the correct layer, which is the room name layer. I'm going to take it, I'm going to copy it, come over here, I'm going to paste it, and then I'm going to use the match properties and match to that layer and I want this to show up so I'm going to increase the scale of this by 4 to get it to show up pretty apparently on the drawing and actually I can go even bigger than that. Let's go to 8. I already went to 4 so I'm just going to scale it to and the box doesn't increase size just the text does so you have to go back in here and increase the size of the box. I've got option 1 and then simply take these and change them so that we know that they're different so we've got our three different layouts that we're going to associate those files to. We're going to come in here and this layout, again, I don't want to move the layout. What I want to do is grab the grips on here. So I'm going to hit Control or Shift and clip those grips. And I'm going to just slide these over and slide them over 25 inches, which is the multiple for 2400. And then I'm getting to this point, which is that next drawing over. I'm going to move this back to where it needs to be moving it over 25 inches again and I'm going to save that and go to this next one and this next one will be 50. What I want to do is select the corner points, take those points and move them again this time 50 and since I coordinated the layout to line up exactly where it needed to be it's selecting that option 3 and I move it back onto the paper and 
the only thing that's not showing up here is the annotative scale. If I use that button now, the annotative scale will show up. Do that for this one as well, and do that for this one as well. Now you can see very quickly I was able to create three layouts for three different floor plans all in one file. And I can come in here using the shift command, select all these layouts, and use the publish selected layouts. And it's going to show me all the different layouts here that I'm going to be publishing. And I have all the same default set up with the PDF printer that we installed. And we're going to hit publish. And it's just telling me here that my job is publishing in the background. And the way I can tell that is this little icon down here is kind of popping up a piece of paper every second or so. When that's done, I'll have my file saved. So here they are. We have all our three options. There's option three, option one, option two. For those of you who don't know, there's a very quick way in Adobe Acrobat to come and combine all these files together. You just click them in your Explorer window. You select the files that you want to combine. You go ahead and combine them, and now their files are together. It doesn't always put them in the right order, but Acrobat is very friendly in that way too. You can just grab this one and move it up to the top and now you've got a combined file that has the options option one option two option three in order as they're supposed to be printed i hope you found that helpful mm -hmm.